what's happening guys just want to keep you posted on the update on the trailer project these are the little setbacks I'm working on a, a used product you never know uh, we bought this trailer from Harley Davidson drove out to Milwaukee to pick it up and this was our former race trailer and we're trying to bring it back to the days of glory and make it nice and there were some rusted fittings on here and we had a, a bolt break off and I didn't know it was broken off and I almost cut the tip of my finger off when I was polishing it, I found out there's a razor sharp bolt. That's so we're just gonna grind it off. And then I'll give you a progress update on where we're at. So stay tuned. We've been That's nice and smooth. Now we can polish that up and get this. Uh, this um, rust off. This is an aluminum trailer, all aluminum. That's why it makes worth redoing. Even it's a 2001 model. Usually, I would never put this kind of time and effort in. But this is an old feather-like trailer, Carly Davidson trailer. Ronnie Brooks is behind the camera there, and um, he's been working with it, me on it for a couple days. Just to give you an idea, uh, this is um, this is some of the aluminum here where we actually uh, polished that. We sanded it down with an 800 grit, and then a. a excuse me, a thousand grit, and then 1,500, and then 2,000. Then we use the buffing wheel with, this is metal polish on here. And look how nice it came out. I'll show you how the other side looks. This is the other side over here. Um, this is what it looked like before. It had the feather -like decals on there. And I'll show you the products we used to get that off. So it was like a torn old decal. So we took that off and sanded it down and polished it. And our good friend John Greer offered to help Saturday and Sunday. So we're just prepping the trailer, uh, getting it ready for the next level of polish. We use an uh, uh, aluminum etching product on all of the aluminum except for this top piece right here. We haven't done that yet. I'll show you, I'll show you what we've been using. Um, well, for one, we used about, a, about 25, maybe 50 of these small rags. We, want, we, we steam clean the whole trailer to start. Also put new Michelin tires on it. And um, we've been using this uh, aluminum etching this is the polish we're using Zephyr Pro 40. I did order a couple other products we're gonna try. We've tried Mothers. So far, this is the best stuff we've been, been able to find for doing this. And once we got the feather light decals off, we used a, uh, where's the rubber wheel we used? On the um, other drill. On the other drill? Yep, we got it back this there. Is, this is, yeah, this drill right here. To, to get the decals off, this is the best tool I've ever found. It's a rubber wheel right here. And um, it's perfect for taking decals off. Part number 07499. You get a decal like this one right here, the residue that's left on it. You use this wheel and you can just take the decal off like this. A little bit of elbow grease. So that's how we're getting all, got all the decals, the pedal light decals off. Then we use an adhesive manu uh, goo gun. It's an adhesive remover, along with a little bit of steel wool on the um, quadruple zero steel wool, real lightly going with the grain on aluminum to take the rest of the adhesive off. Then we start out with a thousand grit wet sand. You just grab a bucket, dump it in the water, and just go back and forth lightly with a thousand grit. And then we use the 1500. Then we went all the way out to 2000. And it only took me about that one section, a two foot section, might have taken me maybe 15 minutes tops to do. And then we use the buffing wheel uh, on the, with the, um, this right here, this pad, you just put this on here and put it on, on and, and polish it. So we got a long ways to go. Uh, there's there's a, a strip on the top that's actually 44 feet long and there's four, uh, one on the bottom. So you get 88 feet per size. I guess 172 foot of aluminum we're gonna polish. We use that cleaning substance on the inside of, of all the hinges right here. It was like, uh, you know, it's a 20 year old trailer, so a lot of the, the hinges and stuff were dirty. We did the top of the door. This section right here is gonna get lined with a stainless steel, polished stainless steel. And then we're gonna mount on here a hand clean, cleaning uh, station with um, paper towels and a couple of uh, racks for, uh, on the door here and a small tool shelf. So um, it has the original wrap on it. Right now from Harley-Davidson, this was the NHRA uh, Harley-Davidson V-Rod drag trailer and Screaming Eagle drag trailer. They won a bunch of national championships with this trailer. And Ann Paluzzo was a team manager, actually owned it for the last 10 years. They took it off the road in 2009. So Ronnie and I have been working on it for a couple days now. We stripped the whole inside out. They had a lot of stuff in here that was good for the race team, but we took everything out, everything, every single 
thing that was in here got stripped out. It would, uh, we, we did a little test area on aluminum right here. We polished aluminum right here. You can see how nice that looks compared to the, the area that we didn't polish farther down. So um, the wheels, these are the original steer wheels with new Michelin tires. It's missing two of the wheel covers, so I ordered four new Phoenix wheel covers, stainless steel wheel covers. Those are coming in. So we're going to put new wheel covers on it, but with the new tires for now, eventually I'd like to put out coal rims on it, but we don't have the money for it to do it right now. And these bolts right here, you can see they have a little bit of rust on them. We're going to sand those with a 220 and 320 grit and then prime them and paint them. Probably silver, although I met with our graphics guy today. We're going to, we're going to design a graphic that's going to lay over this wrap. We're going to put a New England Motorcycle Museum graphic where it says Harley Davidson on the front, both sides and the back. And then we're going to probably put a Kaplan Cycles logo here. And in order to go more with our theme, which is red, white, and blue, we're going to put a, a blue stripe up here with white stars and then red. So it'll be blue and red and white. So I'll have a red, white, and blue stripe going up the side. Kind of like the inexpensive way to make the wrap work for us and advertise our business, even though it was a former Harley Davidson trailer. So um, Ronnie and I have been uh, busting our asses in here. We're here. What time did we leave here last night, Ronnie? We're right about 8 o'clock almost. We we, we were burning the midnight oil, uh, stayed late last night. And sure. on the wall, if you remember the first video, there were all kinds of racks and shelves and stuff on here. We stripped everything out. We got a whole pile of parts that came out of here. And there's still some stuff we had, we've had we got to struggle with. There's this, um, what do you call this stuff, Ronnie? Like a adhesive, like a bumper, like yeah. a bumper pad. It's like a little, little rubber adhesive all over the place. And I met with, I told you guys I didn't know where to buy the metal from. And we did some research. And lo and behold, the company that we bought all of the metal to restore, the milk, the, 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 stair, the stairs and the, the, metal, uh, the metal railing and everything that we, we did inside the mill, we all... Uh, I called them up and said, yeah, we, we, we do trailers too. They do all the kind of specialty trailer work. So we're going to prep the inside. We're going to steam clean the whole inside because it's, it's kind of crusty. And they do the, uh, they do, they sell the 0 .040 aluminum that you mount on the wall. So from the, from here up to here is going to be three six times. The first lower two feet is going to be diamond tread plate, three sixteenths of an inch thick. And we're putting uh, e track you can see the motorcycles, we want to haul in here. We're hoping to haul about, uh, well, we're, we're going to get 25 dirt bikes in here sideways, at least 22, 22 to 25, depending on the side of the bikes. And the way it's going to work, there'll be one bike going this way, and I'll show you videos once it's loaded. One going this way, one going this way, one going this way, and we're going to alternate all the way down. So there's only three tie down points right here in the front. So we're going to run each track along the floor right up against the wall about two inches off the wall all the way up to the front and across and back down that side so we'll have multiple tie down points i also what i learned on my last trail the 28 footer putting all the tie downs in the back was more work because at the end of the day you had to walk back and forth and load up to, to, you know pick up all your tie downs so we're gonna have a tie down rack on the wall right here and one right here and there'll be three points three there'll be three sets of tie down racks in here uh so We'll be able to um, not have to walk all the way across. And on the walls, I already bought. Um, we got we got set up as a, a dealer for Pit Posse Motorsports, and Pit Posse uh, sent us our first shipment of product. On the, what we're doing on the front wall here is um, these are these are actually a, a, a flip down. The, the main goal is to not have anything on the floor because we want to haul as many motorcycles as we can. And what we're going to do is. Um, Everything that's mounted will be mounted on the wall. So up top here, we're putting a mattress in here and two windows, and we're putting the stainless steel on the on the front right there. We're carving this, putting two windows, and then black will be on the wall. So from two foot up will be black 040 aluminum. That's why I went with the black. Um, this is a flip down seat, so it mounts on a wall like this. Then you unload the bikes and you flip this little thing out, and you got yourself a little a little seat. And it doubles as, as a seat mounted to the wall and also a step to get up into the bed, especially for Christy, because she's only five foot, like five foot one. So she needs a, a step. I need to see it. It's a long way up. Then in the middle, we're going to have a black fold down table. So we need two chairs and a table. And we're going to have a rack that I have inside. I'll show you that I'm mount on the wall. Then I've got these are two five gallon containers that I'm going to mount two five gallon water jugs. So I'll have 10 gallons of water. And it's going to go down to a little basic wall mount sink that, that Pit Pal and Pit Posse. We're, we're, the products we got set up as a dealer for Pit Pal and Pit Posse. Uh, we bought some stuff from E Trailer. Check those uh, guys out, especially Pit Pal and Pit Posse. 
Um, as far as cabinets, we're going to go with Maja line. They're out of Massachusetts. I'm not a dealer for them, but I am a dealer for Pit Pal and Pit Posse. So these are going to mount on the wall uh, with 10 gallons of water and a, a small um, sink going to a floor of drains. It's just going to be regular water. And then on the door, we're going to mount a bunch of stuff on the door. So th this is a helmet rack right here. We got This is their black helmet rack uh, from Pit Posse. That's going to mount up on the wall also for two helmets. And then it's got a jacket hanger on the side here, you can see. Uh, and then a spot for your gloves. And you can put, you know, different stuff inside of here. Uh, your guns or, or your Captain America weapons, whatever, whatever you want to put in there. So, um, anyway, that's basically, we're just at the starting stage. Take a look at the way it looks now. Ryan and I did a little test section right here on the floor. Uh, you can see the original. I was going to, I was considering doing a, um, spray and bed liner, but rather than do that, we're gonna polish the original aluminum floor. It's probably gonna take 15, 20 hours, a couple days, but we'll get that looking good. And that's something that'll last forever. You can just repolish it. This is gonna get replaced with a new piece of diamond plate and we're putting a step. I had my picnic table over here, it doesn't look that high, but this is picnic table height. This trail is up pretty high. So for someone like Chrissy to step out, even me at 6'2", it ain't easy. So we're gonna have, whether we're having to build a step that mounts, mounts on the side to flip out. One of the things Ronnie and I struggled with was we weren't sure what we were gonna do. We, we just pulled, like this is, this is the last piece of hardware that came out of the trailer. This is, this is where they, they mounted the dyno to, one of the plates. We pulled a, sh how many pieces of hardware we pulled out of this thing, Ronnie? Probably all together, probably like 50 pieces, different brackets and everything. And we got 70 going back in, and I'll show you some of them, but ones that are specific to what we do. So we want this when we when, when we open this trailer door back here when we when we get to a when we get to a to a, a show or wherever and uh, we want we open the trailer we want it to look professional we want to, I want basically angels to sing when I open the door so trust me just like when I redid the mill and when I redo motorcycles and I redo this trailer it's going to be beautiful but we do struggle along the way uh, like like these are kind of rusty looking see how shitty these look they got this this glue stuff on here they're kind of rusty looking they're all scratched up. So Ronnie and I were talking, we're gonna get an 80 grit sander and sand down the big gouges, then go with a 120, then a 200, then a 300, and, and then go to a 1,000, 15, all the way up to 2,000, and try to polish these. We're gonna do a small, like one by one foot section, then, then set back and say, okay, where are we at? How long did it take? What are we gonna do? Are we doing both wheels, wheel wells like that, or are we in fact going to bring it to Linex in Hartford, have spray and bed liner put on the wheels? That's the cheapest way out. Probably cost a few hundred bucks. I prefer keeping it aluminum. We'll see. Oh, it remains to be seen. The cabinets for Modulite will be eight foot of cabinets from here to here, um, and they'll be uh, uh, they'll, they'll be mounted on the wall right here, same as our other little trailer that we had, the twenty footer. So Atlas Metals and South Winters, ch check them out. They've been around for generations. Uh, Rob Junior, his dad, uh, Rob Senior, is there, and I was working with Junior. He, it's a first class facility, 24,000 square foot. They do world class projects. Something like this where we don't have the shears to bend the metal. They're gonna, I'm buying all the material, this, the diamond shred plate and the 050 aluminum, and 040 aluminum in black, and the 040 polished stainless steel from them. And they're gonna, they're gonna cut it and mount it in here. It's 80 bucks an hour, but guaranteed I'll, I'll save money in the long run because we don't have the cutting tools. We probably mess up the material. Sometimes my, get, my dad used to say, leave to God what is God's, and leave, this, leave, this, leave the Caesars what is Caesars, right? So, um, I'm not sure what he meant by that, but he basically meant do what you're good at. Sometimes you got to sub stuff out. We'll talk about that later on a product, motorcycle project we're working on, but the rear ramp here, uh, we haven't figured out. We're going to do a test section. They had sprayed a coating on here, like, what would you call it, Ronnie? Like a, uh, I would say like, like, a, like a, gray. a scratch resistant coating, maybe? Yeah, yeah. We want to try to take that off and clean these ramps off. But we're not sure if we're leaving these ramps off or if we're taking these extended ramps off. These are good for like a NASCAR style toolbox, which we actually have one that we might be putting in here. That, so we're, a couple of things are still up in there. On the outside of the trailer, we already did the annual inspection on it, put the tires on it, all the lights work, they're all LED lights. We did the aluminum um, cleaner on all the aluminum. We cleaned the outside thoroughly. The only one we have an aluminum cleaned is the top. And before we leave today, I'll probably let Ronnie do this side. I did the other side. We're going to get that feather light decal off and get it ready to go over to Jonkers. Come on in the shop. I'll show you what um, You can see we polished uh, the top rail on that one about 10 years ago, and it still looks good. So with polished aluminum, it beads up the water. It stays cleaner, easier, 
and it, and it, and it go, goes better. So inside here, um, these are some of, this is the cabinet that's going, going to go inside. Uh, it's a flip down cabinet with a table on it and two shelves. This is by module, really high quality, all in black. This is the, um, the, the, the uh, uh, hand wash station where you put your hand cleaner in here and you got your, your paper towels mounted to the bottom. This is an uh, aerosol can wall rack from Pit Posse. Of course, we're going to have our four and one in there. And then these are for the tie downs. These, are, these go on the wall. These are by Pit Posse also. I've got these in black and I've got them in stainless. Uh, we're going to mount these in three different locations in the trailer for all the tie downs. Uh, we're ordering new anchor tie downs with a soft strap on it. The tie downs that I have are all kind of old and beat up. And uh, we found that the ones, like these don't have a soft strap. So, uh, the new ones, I've got uh, 25 sets here, but we'll use these one on the other trailers. The new ones have a soft strap that'll go around the handlebar so you don't have to mess up the handlebar or you can go around the triple clamp. If you got a bike that it doesn't fit around the handlebars like a big Harley or something. So th those are, these tie downs will be mounted in there. This is another helmet rack. You know, we have off-road helmets and street bike helmets. I, I personally own, I don't even know how many helmets, whole shitload, but maybe six or seven that I wear regularly. So I'll bring a few with me, one for street, one for going fast on the street, one for off-road. This is a helmet rack, but on the bottom, it's got these hangers, hanger things. And I had these in my last trailer, and this is a cat's ass. You can put your helmet on this and hang up your jackets. But the problem was bouncing on the road, my leather jackets are heavy, they were breaking the hangers. So I ordered these, these, um, these, this came from Pit Products. Check these guys out. They got any, everything you'd ever want to do to outfit your trailer. Pit Products, or a dealer for them, them guys, or Pit Posse. This is a tire rack. So, you know, you're going down to Daytona and want to have a couple spare tires. This mounts on the wall. You put your spare tires on there in case you catch a nail or, or blow your tire out doing hole shots. This is for um, funnels. You always want to know where your stuff is in the trailer, so you've got a funnel rack. Uh, this is another helmet mount. This one you put on the door. So when you come back from riding, you just hang your helmet up, put your keys in here. That's pretty cool, huh? And um, these are these are the Condor wheel chocks. I'll have three of these in there for big full dressers that I don't want to spin sideways. Those will be facing forwards. And this was also, this was made by Atlas Metal um, in South Windsor. The company is doing our metal works. They got the Harley Davidson logos in here. Um, about 150 bucks for these, which is a bargain. They're made out of, I think, 316 inch steel. Very nice. This is another module line. Uh, this is something that I'll mount on the wall also that I'll put a five gallons of gas can in. So if you're, and probably five gallons of diesel. If you're on a road trip and you run out of fuel, or you can't find a diesel station, so you want to keep some spare fuel in the truck. This is a tool stabilizer for the wall mount. Mini E-Track plates, you put these on the wall and clip in here uh, all kinds of different attachments. Like this is a nine inch bungee cord that, that's for E-Track for strapping stuff down in this. What's this running? That's a TP holder right there. <laughs> Diamond tread plate TP holder. What, what you do with this is uh, put it near your porta potty. So if you ever got to take a dump and you're on the road, there's no there's something like worse than squatting behind your trailer and flies flying around, you know, and hoping you don't poop on your shoe, you know, and you know people driving by. You know, we've all been there. You know, you're on a 24 hour road trip to Daytona and you want to get there quick. Nothing like having a porta potty in your trailer. So we, we bring a porta potty in our trailer, and it's usually good for like four or five maybe a week, and you just empty it out with the rest up. Here's another, you put this by the door, your mag light goes in there, and you hang your keys on here. Um, so those are just some of the, these are the E-Track clips that I was talking about that you can put on the wall. Um, Doc, how many road trips have you been on with me in, in the trailers? A lot, a lot. Like, uh, like Mid-Ohio. How many, uh, how many bikes have we, we our trip to Maine when we, we totally overloaded the trailer at like 30 bikes and you got a flat tire block? Flat tire, right? uh, yeah. Broke the hitch. Yup. Had to have the hitch welded. So, yeah. so, so we've had a lot of blowouts on the road, haven't we, Doc? So what do we have in every trailer? One of these. Doc yeah. and I can do a NASCAR style wheel change in about what? We got it done in about three minutes. Uh, yeah. I mean, you gotta be prepared. Absolutely. So you gotta have a spare tire. I just got my spare tire covers. The Harley Davidson spare tire covers. I have a spare tire mounted on the front of, of our trailer. One bolt takes that off. This is a. You can just spin it like this real quick to pop it off. And what I do is I keep a four by four piece of wood in the trailer, which is actually holding the trailer up right now. You see that piece of wood underneath the front right there. Um, after I hook it to the trailer, that goes in the back of the pickup. You get a flat, all you do is pull the, 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 uh, the truck forward onto that four inch piece of wood and it takes the tire that's flat off the ground. So you either back up or drive up to it. So you don't even need a jack. I do bring a jack just in case the shit hits the fan. 
and if for some reason that doesn't work, we keep a floor jack. The floor jack weighs about, where's our, we got a floor jack in here? Right here, this is, this is what we bring for a floor jack. Um, this one right here, it's a, it's a three ton, and it's enough to get it up off the ground, uh, one side anyways. Now this is a heavy piece, and it's got this big bar, you can easily smash into a vintage bike when you hit, hit over a bump. So it's not here yet, but one of our vendors, I think it was Pit Pal Products, I don't remember, um, I ordered to have a wall mount, of course wall mount, get it off the floor rack for that where you take the handle off and you slide it into a wall mount, that way it's not going to bounce or hit anything. And when you have all these brackets to put everything, it's easy to check, do I have my, my, my uh, jack, do I have my, my T-handle, do I have my flashlight, you want a flashlight to get a blowout in the middle of the night, you want to see what you're doing underneath the trailer, that kind of thing. I always have multiple flashlights with me, so those are some of the accessories that are going into this build. Um, a lot of what we're doing is cosmetic upgrades, cleaning it because it's 20 years old, polishing it, uh, putting a brilliant shine on the aluminum, and uh, putting the graphics on it. But, but mainly what we're doing is mostly functional stuff because right now uh, there's only a single layer uh, uh, wall on this thing. This is a very light aluminum trailer. There's no inner wall. You just got the outer wall here, no inner wall. So with a diamond tread plate on the bottom uh, and the 050 aluminum on the top, that time trip plate three inches thick, you'll be able to drive a motorcycle and tie it down right up against the wall and it won't go anywhere. It'll be perfectly stable and you won't damage the, the, the trailer. Ronnie, is there anything you'd like to add about the new trailer or the project that we've been working on? No, sir. I just know that when we get done with this project, it's going to be, you know, it's as a top shelf. Yes, it is. Everything else we do, we want to you know, strive for not perfection, but progress. We want to make it as nice as we can, you know, so. And anybody can go out and buy a brand new, um, well, anybody who's wealthy can go out and buy a brand new, Feather light, 44 foot trailer outfitted and just a basic shell like this, they, they're about $44,000. We didn't do that, we bought a 21 year old one at a fraction of that, but we're gonna make it almost as nice as a new one for pennies on the dollar, but it'll be badass. And for what we do, you know, there's a certain, when you buy something brand new, it never gets any better. But when you when you buy something like this and make it better, well, you kind of put the signature on it. Those are some of the chemicals we've used. Have I left anything out uh, of the chemicals we used? I know we use. No, sir. Uh, tell them, tell them about the spray, spray adhesive. Oh yeah. You know to get our graphics back. Yep. Uh, we we met with the graphics guy today. Uh, as you can see, a little bit of the of the wrap up there is peeling down. So we got this super seventy seven. This is what professionals use: adhesive uh, aerosol. And what you do is when you have a bit of of the uh, aerosol of the wrap coming up. You put a piece of painter's tape right here and one on the top, you lift it up, spray it both sides, let it tack up for about 30 seconds, 60 top, and then push it back down. Once it's glued, you pull the painter's tape off and that keeps you from getting any paint residue anywhere else on there. There's probably a dozen spots on the trailer that Ronnie and I are gonna do that to. So, well, thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned it, as the trailer evolves from what you see now into something really special, uh, specifically for what we do, which is going to Laconia in Americade and to Ricerama and all the big events uh, for spending a week in our, in our trailer, you know, uh, and picking up big loads of bikes. You need a big trailer to pick up. You know, we have the small trailer. We can fit like maybe eight or nine bikes in there sideways, six forwards, but that's just a 20 footer. This one's 36 foot. You have almost twice the capacity. So we'll be able to uh, ship big loads of bikes. So that's what we're, we're striving for. We want to be safe and we want it to look good rolling down the road. So thanks for watching. God bless America.